Hello, Rafe Hadel Mankiw here. Uh, the clip you are about to see is taken from a debate that I had uh, regarding the astonishing story of the Church of England creating a £1 billion fund to go towards black-led schemes as a means for the Church to atone for its sin of investing in slavery in the 19th century. Uh, now, the Church of England is, of course, entirely free to spend its money as it sees fit, Yet increasingly it seems that its spending decisions are no longer motivated by doing the most good, but in terms of virtue signaling. And it seems as if the church these days is replacing theology with ideology, particularly critical race theory and cultural Marxism. You know, for many decades, the Church of England was called the Conservative Party at prayer. I'm afraid these days it will be more accurately described as Black Lives Matter at prayer. Spending money to help the most disadvantaged should always be welcomed, of course, uh, but the question is, who really are the most disadvantaged people in British society? Well, in fact, it's white working class boys who are the most disadvantaged group. In other words, there are people of all races and all creeds who are deserving of help and support from the church and other charities. Only 4% of Britain is black. To target one group to the exclusion of others when other groups face similar or arguably worse challenges or issues is and always will be wrong and must be opposed. And of course, when it comes to the abolition of slavery, the church should be celebrating the fact that it was the evangelical Christian movement in Britain that set the agenda for abolition. And I'm talking here about the Clapham sect, a group of evangelical Christians, including most famously William Wilberforce, but many others that were based at a church just down the road here, two miles away or so, Holy Trinity Church in, in Clapham, South London. That church still stands today. And that group of committed and influential Anglicans spearheaded the abolition of the slave trade and of slavery itself. It was an inspirational episode, not only in British history, but in world history, because it is impossible to imagine such a movement happening anywhere else outside of Britain or Protestant Europe. Slavery was universal, but the evangelical movement that went to abolish it was something that was unique to Britain and Western Europe, and that should be celebrated. Anyway, enough from me. Here's the video. If Justin Welby's very much invited this, he's commissioned this report into reparations and investments to atone for historical slavery links, and this is the outcome. You know, just imagine how you would feel today if you were a victim of sex abuse at the hands of the Anglican clergy. In 2018, you know, Welby uh, said that the church was going to commit 200 million pounds to the victims of church abuse. Well, now, six years later, those victims are still awaiting payment. You know, the Church of England has been dragging its heels and doing everything it can to avoid or, or delay making these payments. So how would you feel if you're one of those victims, your, your life destroyed, perhaps with PTSD, to hear the church talk and, you know, Femi talk about healing and repairing and atoning for sins about something from 200 years ago, and there are no victims alive today. Nobody alive today is a victim of slavery. We're talking about eight generations ago, and the lives of the great, 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 great grandchildren of slaves in the Caribbean are far better than they would have been had their ancestors never left Africa. That's an unfortunate fact people don't like to know. The life expectancy in the, in the Caribbean is 15 years longer than in West Africa. The GDP per head is about 10 times as high as it was. And there's a one billion pound fund being allocated for all this by the Church of England. I think it's the ultimate in indulgence and immoral perversity actually to prioritize the lives of people in the 19th century over living victims in the 21st century. And I think the Church of England will be, do very well to remember Bible scripture, particularly Matthew, where it says, you hypocrites, remove the plank from your own eye. Yeah. This fund is going just to black-led uh, uh, schemes. Doesn't matter if someone is a descendant of a slave, if they have no connection to slavery, or indeed, Black people that today, there are millions of them who descend from other slave owners. You have to remember, there were more Africans kept in bondage in Africa by other Africans than were ever transported across the Atlantic. 
Why should they potentially benefit from these church funds? But that's what the Church of England is essentially saying. Mm. It's saying that that's all black people today are the victims of slavery, and that's absolutely absurd.